To week six. Take a look through the future. We got some juicy matchups yet again. Last week we had some big ones, G2 Vitality, Echo Fox, Cloud9, and again we got some nice ones in NA and EU. Let's uh, let's start off in the NA. In it. the NA. In the <laughs> North America. Uh, it's another Echo Fox tilt that's going to be an interesting one. They're taking on Team Liquid, who yes, is coming fresh off a loss to the Golden Guardians. Oof. The Golden Guardians. Yikes. Uh, so we'll see. This is a big chance for Liquid to rebound against the top team in the LCS. Absolutely. Definitely looking for a bounce back performance. And that's, you know, not to try and take anything away from the Golden Guardians, but they seem to be, you know, most of their games they're losing in lanes, getting killed and crushed and then not making it. This one against Team Liquid, they managed to hold out in their lane phase and get all the way into the team fights. And then they were the ones coming away with the team fight victories against Team Liquid. Liquid cannot let that happen against Echo Fox. They are going up against one of the most decisive and aggressive teams in the NALCS and arguably all around the uh, Western regions right now, I would say that Echo Fox is arguably the most decisive and aggressive in their calls. And that's why they're able to come away with such spectacular plays when they are. And I think that Echo Fox will be using that to their advantage once again to pick up a win against Team Liquid. The yeah. slide is, isn't over for Team Liquid, it's still going. I mean, you're going down a big slide when Steve's you're Steve's got to break out the paycheck real soon. There's a double lift play, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yowzers. What, what, are you, um, what are you jumping into there? I don't even know. I, I mean, listen, Your death? kudos to Golden Guardians. They played super well in that game. Lorlo has actually looked pretty rock solid on a team that's been bad yeah. uh, for the Guardians. So kudos to them. They played well. But I mean, Liquid, they played the fastest game of the split the first time they played Golden Guardians. Absolutely demolished them. And since, you know, those weeks, it's changed a lot. They lost three of four. I, I don't know if they have a chance against Echo Fox. A lot of their performance issues, I think, right now are coming from the way that they're trying to settle into a play style that isn't quite what they were running at the beginning of the season. I thought that the beginning of the season when they were running more of an, you know, Ole and Smithy kind of roaming type of idea and that they would be cooperating with each other uh, to pull off some plays. I thought that was where they were at their absolute strength. And I think that they should get back towards that to try and get off this little, little skid. Yeah, and I think Impact specifically and Doublelift have been underperforming a little bit the last couple of weeks. So we'll see if they can bounce back against Echo Fox. Uh, another nice looking matchup on paper uh, in week six is Cloud9 against Clutch. Uh, Clutch has won four in a row. The last time they lost a game was when they played Cloud9. Yeah. Uh, so they've been looking really solid. Apollo and Hakuo are looking much better than they were early weeks in that bottom lane. And even Lyra's starting to step up finally. Oh yeah, that was the, you know, I was totally calling Lyra out on his, on his Skarner play, just saying like, don't even bring it up again. Yeah, you said he was dead. Absolutely, turns me out wrong again. This guy brought up his performance. Really happy to see Lyra playing the way that he needs to for Clutch Gaming to be involved in these games much more often. And then yes, you bring up the fact that you have a Febivin in your, in your mid lane who can absolutely be a star for you. And then even you're seeing it now with Solo in the top lane as someone who can handle his own and actually contribute meaningfully to these teams and to the team fight. So I think that Clutch Gaming is a much more uh, realistic and real team as far as a playoff threat than we actually have given them credit for in the past. But I think that now they're going up against somebody who will best them in Cloud9. They're just too good right now. Yeah, and the last time these guys played, it was pretty dominant uh, towards Cloud9. They had a bit of a throw around Elder that stalled the game out <laughs> a bit for Clutch, but I mean, they still ended up losing that one. Uh, Clutch looks super clean against TSM in their second matchup. No Apollo. Clutch has maybe the, steals. maybe the cleanest week last week, arguably. Yeah, and again, maybe you say it took them a little too long to close out that TSM game because they had a huge lead and were in full control. But, I mean, they still won the game. Yeah, uh, definitely. So I, I, I think they have a better shot against Cloud9 than they did in um, the previous matchup. But, I mean, the main reason Cloud9, Cloud9 lost to Echo Fox was that Lucian top and yeah. just how well Dardock avoided vision and played around that. So I think Cloud9 is going to look a little different than in that matchup. Right. And, you know, things like the Lucian top pick can be, can be good because it, you know, gives you a very clear win condition to play around and, and something to be focused on. But obviously when you don't execute that win condition, it doesn't matter at the end there because you're going to be losing. And that's obviously what happened. And I am, I'm hoping and I'm quite confident that Cloud9 will be avoiding anything like that heading into this week. 
Uh, also, Echo Fox, TSM, another interesting matchup. TSM, it's not quite Hard must win TSM games, there. but it's getting close. Definitely getting closer. And especially when you're losing games like this to you know, Cloud9 and then Clutch Gaming, teams that you know you're going to be playing in the playoffs. And to you know, Clutch Gaming, you've lost both your matches to them. So how are you going to you know, even go into this thinking the confidence of that, well, we're going to pick up the three wins needed to get ahead of them? You know, it would be a tough, tough, tough thing to ask. I don't think in the final four weeks TSM can afford another 0-2 week. They got to go at least one and one going forward. And hey, this is the time that, you know, Coach Song came out and said, hey, week four, week five, that's when you should be judging us on how things are going. And things haven't improved. It's time to... It's week six, man. It's time to, time to step up. And you know what? It seems like the issue that was there for TSM was not enough communication. And now that you kind of have too much communication, too many things are being called out and not enough people are being decisive on what actually to do. And that's why I give so much praise to uh, Dardock and Echo Fox for actually being able to you know, clear through the clutter and make that, you know, aggressive decision call on it. And it seems that TSM is hearing out all these type of options and not being able to actively decide on it fast enough. Absolutely. Uh, over in EU, last week's most hyped up match was, of course, G2 Vitality. And, I mean, maybe it lived up to the hype. Not really. G2 kind of If you're a G2 fan, it lived up to the hype, maybe. G2 just clobbered them. Uh, all Vitality got in that game was two dragons. No yeah. kills, no turrets, two dragons. That's all they could get. Complete control by G2. They've won six in a row. They're taking on Fnatic this week, who have won five in a row. It's the Ooh. old gods back at the top of the standings. I'm excited for this match. Yeah, I am definitely really looking forward to this one, and I'm sticking with the Kings. I am going with G2 on this one. I think that they have absolutely started to find their stride. Wonder has really stepped it up in the top lane, and then you're talking about Perks. Perks has absolutely been a standout performer in the mid lane, and he is finally starting to get some more help and more cooperation with Yankos. I have really liked what G2 has brought to the table in the past week or two. Yeah, absolutely, but I mean, Fnatic has also looked super good over the past little while. They've gotten a lot of their issues kind of figured out. Caps is performing at at worst, a top three level out of mid laners. You saw him clobber Nuke Duck. Got a couple of yeah. solo kills last week. Uh, Reckless and Hillisang seem to be performing a lot better. You saw them getting some 2v2 kills uh, in those clips. So as, uh, so as is so as in the regular season. Yeah. Some games he looks great, sometimes he's kind of feeding. Yeah, sometimes you're like, oh, that's, that's, that's the all pro so as. Looks good. And then sometimes you're like, that's, that's also so as. That's, that's week one world so as. <laughs> that's, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Um, Fnatic, yes, they have looked much better and they're picking up those five wins in a row, but I still think that G2 is just in a better shape right now in their current form and their current uh, performances that I think that they're going to be the ones coming out on top. All right, well, you believe in them. And then we also got two teams that are looking to get back to that top of the standing. Vitality's still at the top of the yeah, standing. Vitality, but, not uh, as far down as the no, other I so. Mean, they're tied misfits. for first. Yeah. They're tied for first. Everyone calm down. Hey, the Misfits uh, just got a huge deal with Alienware. They're feeling good. Maybe they'll turn it around here. I don't know how good you can be feeling. Last week, they beat <laughs> UOL. Yeah, I'd say something, right? Beat UOL. Uh, it's, who's going to rebound better, basically? The last time these guys played, it was basically a barren steal that separated yeah. them from Maxlor. That was... Uh, Certainly not the cleanest of games. That was Vitaly's first loss on the split. Um, this is a big game for both these teams to kind of prove that they are top-tier contenders going forward. Right. Misfits really needs to start picking up these wins, and it's so necessary for them to get because they have just fallen behind right now in these standings and that if you need to get where you want to be in these playoffs and in a, in a better position for these playoffs, you need to start picking up these wins. And this is definitely one right now over a team that is ahead of you and that you know is going to be in this playoff picture, that this is such a vital one for Misfits to pick up but I just don't have the confidence in them. They haven't been playing well enough. And specifically for me, it's the problem right now is Maxler. I don't, and this is a guy who I thought was fantastic and had a, fan, a great performance at Worlds and really came into the spring split and came out of the gates on fire, was really doing well. And just in the last two or three weeks has absolutely fallen flat on his face and has not had the performances necessary to get wins or even anything productive going on the LCS stage. And I think that this continues into the match against Vitality. I think that Vitality will play strong enough against him to keep him down and keep misfits in their losing ways. Yeah, he's played a couple of these carry champions, tried them out with the yeah. Kha'Zix, the Has Rengar. No kills See, in both those games. And, I'm some, and I love nope. these type of carry junglers, right? I love a Kha'Zix. I love the Knife Kitty Rengar. Love it. But 
at the same time when you're watching it in the European LCS, it never seems to quite work. You watch the Kha'Zix, you know, Blossom play the Kha'Zix over in the LCK, and he's, you know, converting on all these kills that they've already poked down people. But then when you're watching the EU LCS, it just seems that that Kha'Zix is feeding, that you've called the exterminator for the bug, and he's out of here. So it's a lot of questions that I would have with Maxlor taking these aggressive style champions, and I can understand that this is how things are, you know, the priority is in, in Europe right now, but I feel like their performance isn't anywhere close enough to warrant these type of picks. I mean, it's... It's the meta of tank junglers. You gotta, yeah. you gotta succumb to the tank meta up. sometimes. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.